Hey everyone, Tony here. Hope you're doing well. It is Wednesday, January 16th. Hope you're holding strong. I have some very bullish and positive news to share with you guys. Definitely some good stuff. A lot to go through, so please stay towards the end of the video um, because it is all great news. Now, um, a few things I want to get out of the way. First, this is not financial or investment advice. Hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet. Also, thumbs up. Um, really quick, there is a scammer. I tweeted about this and I posted on Facebook. There's a scammer going around using the email contact thinking crypto. This person is trying to impersonate me and he's looking to, or he or she is looking to scam uh, folks. So if you see an email from contact thinking crypto, it is a fake email address. It is not me. I will never ask for money, your private information, crypto, whatever it is. Please go ahead and flag this email as spam in your email inbox. This way, um, you know, if enough people sp uh, flagging as spam, Google and Yahoo and all the email servers can, you know, essentially block it and flag it, you know, as it, if, if this person tries to use this email. Once again, though, if they create another email, I will never ask you for your money or anything like that. So please do not, do not send this scam or anything. All right, guys. Um, and if you do have a question, like you can message me on Twitter or on Facebook um, or even use my official email on my website um, and you can contact me. But once again, this is a scam. Now, the big news, very big news. Binance has added fiat pairing. Now, it's on a limited phase one, stage one launch, right? But if you recall, they moved to Malta and last year they talked about you know, looking at getting a banking relationship so they can add fiat pairing. So this has been very much um, anticipated and they launch uh, Euro and Great Britain pound fiat exchange, Binance.je, Binance Jersey, um, essentially allowing you to buy Bitcoin and Ethereum with the Euro or Great Britain, Great Britain pound. Now, this is just stage one, so I'm, I'm assuming more cryptos are gonna come eventually, but this is very big. Binance is one of the largest crypto exchanges in the world by volume, and with them doing this, and with Bittrex also adding fiat pairing, and both exchanges have a plethora of cryptos, it's gonna take away market share uh, from Coinbase, and that's good. Competition is healthy for the market. Um, also, providing folks with fiat on ramps to buy easily buy crypto is great because remember what happened last year when the you know you had to buy for the most part Bitcoin, transfer it over to Binance or whatever to get all coins. And then the Bitcoin network was clogged, right? And the fees were ridiculous. Now folks don't have to do that. They can just go use their fiat currency to buy crypto. Um, so this time around, uh, you know, coming up to the next bull run will be different. A lot more exchanges, a lot more options. Remember last time exchanges had to close their doors. They couldn't handle the volume. This is That's not going to happen this time around. So a uh, great sign here. This is a big win for the market because Binance is, once again, they have so many cryptos and this is one of the largest exchanges and they're going to continue to expand from here. So we can probably expect them to add XRP and others and so forth. But um, huge, huge announcement. Uh, like I said, in, I think a lot of people are waiting for this in much anticipation. And, you know, because they're doing this, expect more exchanges to add fiat pairing. So definitely setting the bar high here and big things are ahead. Um, so they, you know, did their official statement. Um, here's what the Binance.je, Binance Jersey exchange looks like. Um, so uh, big things ahead, guys. Now, next big news that we have here, uh, Genesis Global Trading, which we've talked about. They're an OTC uh, trading firm. Um, if you just, if you recall, I spoke to you guys about the, them reporting that their OTC trading volume is up 50% year over year, significant growth, along with Circle mentioning they traded $24 billion in OTC, uh, ex executing OTC trades. Uh, well, Genesis and BitGo, which is a custodial service, uh, plan to team up to ease cr crypto trading for who? In, uh, regular investors? No, no, no. Institutions. Let me give you the details here, guys. This is a this is a big partnership. Crypto currency custodian BitGo and over-the-counter specialist Genesis Global Trading have teamed up on a service designed to make who? Wall Street 
feel more comfortable dipping a toe in the market. Announced today to tie up uh, means institutional investors storing digital assets with BitGo can use Genesis platform to execute trades at the speed they are accustomed to in the traditional markets. What have I been telling you guys? The goal of all the big money and all these folks getting in is to move this new asset class of cryptocurrencies to the same level as the stock market. Fully regulated, money coming in and out, mass marketing, um, not just crypto, but also securitized token, uh, I should say, tokenized securities. <laughs> I almost said the reverse there. So, you know, just as you have DX Exchange that's launching digital stocks or tokenized stocks, a lot of different commodities and so forth, real estate and so forth, will be tokenized. We're headed to the token economy. Um, and they gave an example here. For example, if a client holds 100 Bitcoin in their BitGo cold storage wallet, they can get a quote via Genesis and sell th those Bitcoins immediately. The moment the client agrees on the trade, BitGo locks up the 100 Bitcoins and holds them to give to Genesis, which initiates a US dollar bank wire to BitGo. Big move. Now, many of you may also uh, recognize the name BitGo because we've talked a bit about them. They are definitely doing some stuff with Mike Novogratz and um, even Circle because, like I said, they are custodial service. So uh, all of these services are being built out in this infrastructure stage. And look at what's happening, right? Uh, in the, While there's blood on the streets, the prices are low, big moves being made. This is how smart money works. Um, that's the opportunity when the blood is on the street, the weak hands are out, this fear, you know, going through the whole cycle of capitulation and anger and fear and all that. The big money is setting up shop and we know they've been buying a significant amount on the, uh, the over the counter markets, guys. So big, big move here. Now, moving ahead, um, shout out to XRP Darren. Uh, this guy here found this document. It's actually an old document from, I think, 2015. And it's from who? Deutsche Bank. Official document on their website. And this document confirms that HSBC is indeed a partner uh, with Ripple. Now, uh, we've had some speculation because we know Chris Larson, one of the founders of Ripple, sits on HSBC's board. HSBC also just recently, it was reported, just I think a couple of days ago, they sent millions of dollars um, in you know cross-border payments via DLT technology, distributed ledger technology, but no mention of Ripple. And we haven't had official statements from Ripple. So I'm not sure in what capacity, maybe it could have been X Current that they were using. Uh, I don't believe it's X Rapid because it goes back to the regulatory certainty issue where I don't believe banks are going to, some banks are not going to touch this depending on the corridor because as Ripple themselves have said, they need regulatory clarity. That's what's been holding up a lot of this. But let me read the statement here from this official document. One example is Earthport, which as a cross-border payments service provider, and Earthport is a partner with Ripple. They were just purchased by Visa, by the way. Uh, partnered with the digital currency network provider Ripple Labs to allow enterprises, including banks, to transfer money more efficiently. Ripple Labs provides a network enabling real-time payments across borders in different currencies. Its clients include two of the top four global banks and four of the top 20 US banks, Bank of America, HSBC, Western Union, Zoom and American Express. So we know about Bank of America being partnered with Ripple. We know about Western Union that was made public. We know about American Express that's made public. Uh, I wasn't, I, I think and they may have mentioned Zoom in the past, but I don't think we knew about HSBC guys. And we have confirmation HSBC, one of the largest global banks partnered with Ripple. So Brad Garlinghouse wasn't kidding when he said major banks would use XRapid and XRP. Obviously, when he said that, I think he was expecting regulatory clarity, but the SEC, the CFTC are dragging their feet, not just specifically with Ripple, but look at BACT. BACT is waiting on the CFTC. Look at the Bitcoin ETFs, right? From the CBOE and the VanEck, 
all these things are being delayed and i think they are being delayed on a on purpose i believe the sec cfdc are dragging their feet on purpose because they're probably waiting for more big money to get in i don't know i'm just you know guessing at this point but it wouldn't surprise me so big uh confirmation here for ripple guys and uh, imagine HSBC using XRapid in some of its corridors, a big bank like that. Now, shout out to XRP Research Center who consolida uh, con consolidated this, but we had some news from R3. As you know, R3 announced in December their Quarta Settler um, pr uh, protocol, which is very similar to XRapid, will use XRP. You know, it can use different digital assets, but it said they were going to use XRP. So... Um, the Corda Network CN launches. Um, CN now bridges Corda Enterprise with Corda, uh, Corda apps. Hence, uh, CE, which is the Corda Enterprise, can now settle with Corda Settler, and which leverages XRP. So here's the official. Um, and uh, wait, I thought I had it up here, but they uh, they have it on their blog post. Um, that it is, yeah, here it is, introducing Quarter Network, and then you can read the press release uh, on their website, so official notice, and you'll notice here the article from December, XRP, the first settlement mechanism. So now you have XRapid, R3 Quarter Settler, um, both have bank clients and different, you know, entities that will need to, you know, use a, a system like this to save money on cross-border payments, Imagine the volume moving through there. But once again, it goes back to which corridors they have regulatory clarity on, and a lot of it has to do with the U.S. So I think that's been holding up a lot um, of of the progress here. But uh, and um, I thought I had it pulled up here, guys. Let me pull it up on my on my uh, profile here on Twitter. But we have some news of Ryan Zagone confirming this he was at a uh he's on a panel with the, with the I, uh, folks on the imf and he said this like what's holding up xrp is not a technical issue or anything like you know, that sort rather it is a um it's related to uh not having regulatory oh here it is so shout out to steven diep um and i'm not going to play the video here but it's ryan zagone uh, November 2018 at the IMF event. So he says the only problem that holds XRP back is regulatory certainty, not technical issues. Uh, he says we need a level playing field for XRP so that the market can pick which one they want to use. So we know the SEC has said Bitcoin and Ethereum are, are not securities, but what about the other cryptos? What about the top 10 and top 50? Like they haven't it's not very hard for them to give clarity and, and definitions and say, make a statement, but they've been dragging their feet. And that's why we do have these congressmen like Darren Soto and Warren Davidson and so forth that are putting out bills to try to take the power away from the uh, SEC and to try to add new definitions for cryptos and, and you know utility tokens uh, because you can't use 70-year-old uh, securities laws that applies to stocks on crypto. It's... Uh, it, 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 it doesn't make sense. It's like trying to put a, a round peg into a square hole, right? The, the definitions, the, all these things don't align. So um, this is, like I said, this is what's the big holdup here for Ripple because XRapid's live. You have some corridors are open, but the big banks, the big ones that want to go live, they, they probably can't touch it yet because they need that regulatory um, clarity, guys. Now, some other um, big news around XRP. Many of you know about the Bison app powered by Boris Stugard, the second largest uh, stock exchange in Germany. Well, someone asked them, you know, hey, will Bison app use XRP? Um, and this is translated, by the way. They said, since we are in beta, so they're in beta phase, there are still trifles that need to be improved. But um, definitely XRP will be available to buy and sell. So um, confirm XRP on the Bison app. Um, and of course, you know, it's the second largest crypto at the moment. It fluctuates between uh, the second and third place, you know, battling uh, Ethereum. But um, confirmation. And the great thing I, I love about crypto, it's global. And it, so there's a lot of potential for, the, the, you know, the upside is incredible. It's not like a stock market, even where 
you know, certain stocks are U.S. specific or Hong Kong specific. It's global. It doesn't close, you know, as far as exchanges. So uh, big things are ahead, guys, in this in this new market, in this new asset class. Uh, like the uh, like is a Swiss based blockchain powered exchange to trade all assets with zero fees. They tweeted at the XRP community. They said, uh, we need your help with spreading the word that f the fiat pairs in which XRP is available on like X, a regula regulated exchange in Switzerland, Euro, USD, and CFH. I'm not sure what that is. That might be a Swiss-based fiat. I apologize to folks in Switzerland I, that I don't know that. Um, we have no trading fees, and you can see that the spread is not high. We appreciate your uh, retweet. So continual listing of XRP with fiat pairing, some exchanges using it as a base currency. And, um, you know, this time around, it's not going to be hard for people to purchase XRP. I remember when, you know, I first got in to get XRP with fiat pairing was so hard. I remember I had to send wire money over to Bitstamp in the UK to buy XRP with fiat pairing because I didn't want to use Bitcoin. It was slow. It took forever. Um, but now I use Uphold and, and also you can use Bittrex and soon it looks like Binance might be uh, opening this up. But Binance looks like they're, notice they didn't add USD pairing. They only did uh, Great Britain pound and Euro probably because they won't trying to they don't want to have issues with the US the US has does not have clarity yet uh, and that's why they moved to Malta I don't blame them now um, so we have big money we have all these corporations and so forth setting up services making acquisitions mergers but we also have politicians you know pushing bills to help grow this market uh, so u.s bill exempting non-custodial crypto services from certain laws reintroduced to congress so this was a bill that was um, put through before but it's being reintroduced so let me give the details a bill exempting companies providing non-custodial crypto services from certain state money transmitting laws has been resubmitted to the u.s congress data confirming this was published on the Congress's uh, official website on January 14th. The bill title is a very long title to provide a safe harbor from licensing and registration for certain non-controlling blockchain developers and providers of blockchain services was submitted by U.S. Congressman Tom Emmer and co-sponsored by Congressman Darren Soto. Darren Soto, as you may know, along with Warren Davidson, introduced the token taxonomy act so this is not even related to the token taxonomy act it may have similar uh similar goals and outcomes that you know if certain things were passed but um good to see the the troops are rallying here uh as far as you know the politicians and congressmen uh emmer has already shown interest in cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology in the past and has been featured in a list of the members of u.s congress involved in crypto, which Cointelegraph published in March last year. As Cointelegraph reported in September 2018, Emmer plans to introduce three bills supporting blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies, including the one resubmitted most recently. The other two bills are resolution supporting digital currencies and blockchain technology and Blockchain Regulatory Certainty Act. So. We're seeing, a, you know, a, I think a push here and hopefully, um, you know, this government, partial U.S. government shutdown doesn't affect, you know, these things being reviewed because uh, I even I know these folks are working, but you know, they may be very much focused on trying to reopen the government. Um, there's obviously things going on with President Trump and trying to get funding for the wall and all that. So there's a lot of distractions is what I'm trying to say. So let's hope you know, these things can get passed. Imagine the token taxonomy act getting passed within the next month or so. That would be amazing. And we see even back, we talked about it uh, yesterday, they're trying to kind of circumvent the CFTC in the, the way they can by by getting uh, buying parts of a uh, self-regulating futures commission company that's 100 years old. So let's see what happens. But progress is being made it's it's a bit slow you know it's slower than we would like but progress is at least being made and um it shows what's to come the writing on the wall the infrastructure being built out and uh you know as long as you got the big money and government involved that's that's definitely a good sign um also you know we've we talked a bit a lot a lot about this in 2018 about 
the kind of mass exodus of talent from traditional markets and companies and moving over to blockchain and crypto. Well, Hiobi Exchange hires compliance chief from Global Bank State Street. So looks like they picked up. This is from a, a few days ago. I, I actually missed it. Hiobi, the third largest cryptocurrency exchange by trading volume, monthly trading volume, has hired a senior professional from a major U.S. base global bank. So uh, the people saying, oh, yeah, crypto's a fad. Crypto is going to die and blah, blah, blah. Yet you have talent, people of high stature here and experience. These are not stupid people. They're, and they're moving to the, this market. And then you have so many, um, you know, investments. And look, look at how much money back raised. One hundred eighty-two point five million dollars. They just made an acquisition, and this is happening, guys, across the board. Big money, and and I mean, come on, Fidelity Digital Assets, backed, right, powered by the parent company of the New York Stock Exchange and Starbucks. I mean, what else do you need to know, right? It's the, these are corporate giants, Wall Street giants, getting in, so. I'm not going to go into details here. I think this is pretty straightforward. The name of the person is Elaine Sun Yi Lin, former head of compliance of the Chinese branch at of State Street. So joining a crypto exchange, and we we've seen uh, I think folks from the Nasdaq you know join crypto exchanges and advisory boards and so forth. So big things are ahead. Keyword here: patience, patience. Let these things play out. Even just as an example, right? Binance moved to Malta last year. Said, hey, we're working on trying to get a bank relationship so we can have you up here. We had to wait, what, seven months or so? These things take time. This is business. Um, and as I said, these people are not making these investments, pouring all these millions of dollars into this um, time and resources and so forth to lose money, to watch the price of Bitcoin to hang around 3000 and XRP at 30 cents. No, 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 my friends. We are the early adopters, the pioneers. Um, it does take a strong stomach to to sit through, you know, these bear markets and roller coasters. But it's as I said, if you put it into perspective, we're very early to the game. It's a young market, a lot of volatility, some manipulation as well. As more money comes in, it'll stabilize, and um, I think we're going to see the takeoff. Just as you saw, I, I think I've shared this with you guys in the past. Um, the gold and the precious metal market, you know, how it grew itself and even the stock market as different features were added to it. So patience is definitely the key here. And um, I think crypto is an opportunity of a lifetime. So is blockchain, uh, disruptive technology. Um, it is the future, the natural evolution of money and currency, blockchain, the next Internet, the next layer on top of the Internet that will allow us to transact um in a better way, uh, more securely, more trust, right, uh, and more better record keeping, and uh, allowing us to to have a kind of an unhackable, unchangeable record online. And this is going to disrupt healthcare and finance and logistics, almost every industry, guys. Because what we're seeing now is just hacks upon hacks of companies getting hacked and so forth. And if they were leveraging blockchain technology, that would not happen. So. Um, it is the future, and and, and we, you know, I've talked to you guys about the token economy and the tokenized securities that are coming, and real estate being tokenized, and we see you know DX exchange launching digital stocks. So that's the future, guys. It's it's all coming together. Um, like I said, going a bit slower than I I wanted to, but what can we do? But uh, keep holding, pay attention to what the big money's doing, what the governments are doing. All signs point to the growth. Um, like I said, we're in a bear market. We're in infrastructure stage. There's blood on the streets, and yet all these big, big moves are happening. Man, it's, it just it's, it amazes me all the new uh, uh, new item, uh, news items that come out every day. It's it's pretty crazy. Anyway, guys, what do you think about this news? Uh, we'll love to hear your thoughts. Leave them below. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Facebook. Links in the description. Also, please help share my channel and video videos with your friends and families on social media so we can spread the facts about the market and what's happening, um, change people's misconceptions about the crypto market so they can actually see the investments that are being made, the, the, the push the push that's being made by government officials because people just sometimes think, oh, yeah, Bitcoin went up to 20 and it crashed. It's a Ponzi. It's a fad, blah, blah, blah. They don't understand what's happening on the 
on the uh, you know on the other a- a- end of the spectrum here it, prices on one end and then you have the infrastructure to build out the services and all that and um so let's help spread the facts the news here guys so thank you for your support i'll talk to you all later